Hey guys, I'm back and I got the stuff fixed on my van this week. Actually, it was last week. Um, but I'm back at the alpaca farm and the weather has turned cool, at least for today. I think it's like 77, 78 degrees and there's a nice breeze. That's degrees Fahrenheit. There's a nice breeze and it's blowing through the van. I got the fans going and hopefully I won't have to run the generator at all, at least for tonight, um, to, cause I won't have to run the air conditioner. Hopefully that, that it'll be the same tomorrow, but we'll find out later. Anyway, I wanted to show you what I fixed on the van. So here we go. First, the most important thing is the gray tank that was leaking, which was a result of my driving through the desert in quartzite like I was in a Jeep. And I scraped bottom m multiple times and tore the, uh, kind of put a crack in the, in the sewer pipe. So, um, what the guy at the RV repair did was he removed the black tank lever so it cannot be ripped open by a tire tread like it did last time um, where I leaked my black tank all the way down I-10 from Quartzsite to Phoenix. <laughs> and he replaced the valve on the gray tank which was not closing properly. He also adjusted the pipes, which he said had shifted, and that's what caused them to start leaking. So I have no more leak, and I'll, hopefully I won't have to replace any of that piping because it was, uh, once he shifted it back in place, it fixed the leak. So yay, no more leak. And if I open this valve, no water will come out which was kind of uh, also a problem because you had to be ready to catch it with the sewer, <laughs> sewer hose. So yay, looks like my gray tank is fixed, at least for now. So this is another issue that will be a while before I can get that fixed. I'm not even trying to fix it myself, but they suggested replacing the whole um, running board uh, rather than trying to repair that uh, fiberglass which doesn't make sense to me. I think the fiberglass could be repaired, uh, repaired a lot cheaper than replacing that running board. So let's see what else was wrong. Oh yeah, the Max Air fan was leaking inside. So I think I can show it to you by making this really, 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 really long. Of course, I can't see it <laughs> that high. Oh, let's see. I don't know. Can we even see up there? I got the oil changed in the generator, but they had to order parts to change the spark plugs and to uh, to change the spark plugs and the air filter. So I had to take it back for them to finish that. But also, the guy noticed that this thing, which was holding the exhaust pipe for the generator in place, this had broken completely in half. And so the, the pipe was just dangling there. So if I had, you know, hit it, scraped it, I scrape all the time when I'm going into uh, steep parking lots. So if I had scraped that, it could have knocked the tailpipe off completely. So anyway, the generator, as far as I know, is working. I haven't tried it since they put the air filter and the uh, spark plugs in. But I'm trusting that they did it properly and that it works. So, so I'm glad to have my generator working, but now that I know <laughs> how much I use that generator, 
it makes me wonder if I should um, improve the solar system on my van. Now, I'm told that I would have to have somebody professionally upgrade the solar panels and possibly the uh, controller and the inverter, uh, which is something I can't do myself. Uh, what I could do is buy like a Blue Eddy system that's powerful. I think that they have one that's like 1800 watts that you can actually plug your RV in, your 30 amp cable into, and it will run the air conditioner. And it comes with 400 watts of solar panels. So this thing is pretty big, so I would have to remove a cushion in my van to store it, which is, which is fine, because nobody can sit on that cushion anyway. There's a closet right up above it. So I'm trying to decide if I want to spend $2,500, or I don't know how much it was. It might have been closer to $2,800 to try to avoid having to use a generator at all, or if I just, just keep using the generator and try to keep it maintained until it's end of life, which I'm told can be about 4,000 hours, and mine has 470-something thousand, uh, 470 point something hours on it right now. It's 476 or something like that. I can't remember. So anyway, um, but I will have to have the generator maintained, you know, every, you're supposed to do it every hundred hours. And I don't, I just don't want to pay somebody to do that because I probably got ripped off, but I think it cost me close to $300 to have that done. It's kind of hard to tell because of all the other work that they did, but I mean, all in all, the stuff that got fixed cost me $692. So, um, let me know what you think about getting a Blue Eddy and just trying not to use the generator at all anymore. Um, it would be nice to be totally electric. Well, I still have a propane uh, furnace and water heater, so <laughs> nothing can't totally be electric. But anyway, um, just thought I'd let you know what my latest dilemma is here. It's trying to decide what to do going forward. Uh, I guess I'll just use the generator and see how it goes. Maybe just let it go until it dies <laughs> and then, then replace it with the Blue Eddy. I don't know. Anybody else have a similar problem? And if so, how did you solve that problem? Okay. Well, I know this was a very short video, but um, I do have a trip coming up. So I will bring you along on my trip and show you the sights that I see and share with you. So I'm not going to tell you where I'm going, but it's someplace really pretty. And uh, hopefully it won't be too hot. So, um, thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, if you like this video, or you like my channel, and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, because it really helps my little small channel out. Okay, thanks, and we'll see you next time.